Hello and welcome to tonight's Tenement Museum virtual book talk, Mango and Peppercorns, a memoir of food, an unlikely family, and an, the American dream. My name is Olivia Knaus, and I have the pleasure of speaking tonight with the authors, Tung Nguyen, Kathy Manning, and Lynn Nguyen. Um, so a little bit more about the authors before we dive in. Um, Tung fled Vietnam almost 50 years ago after the fall of Saigon. Uh, in the U.S., she co-founded the award-winning Hai Vong, a pioneering Vietnamese restaurant in Miami. She currently cooks for select pop-ups and events. We also have Kathy, who is the co-founder of Hai Vong and manages the pop-ups and events. Together, Kathy and Tung share a home in Miami. We also have Lynn, Tung's daughter, uh, who grew up waiting tables at the restaurant and went on to attend Harvard and Cornell and is the co-founder of Liquid Analytics, an artificial intelligence innovation firm. Um, Mango and Peppercorns is their collective story uh, with Tung's beloved recipes sprinkled throughout along with uh, family photos, which we'll be flipping through tonight as well throughout the program. Um, tonight, as Tung and Kathy tell us about Mango, Mango and Peppercorns over the next hour, uh, we invite you to share your questions uh, in the chat and we will return to them a little bit later in the program. And if you would like to purchase your own copy of Mango and Peppercorns, uh, we will be sharing a link to the Tenement Mu Museum shop and you can purchase your own copy directly from that link. Um, so without further ado, Tung and Kathy and Lynn, thank you so much for joining us tonight to talk about your book. It's so good to be here. Thank you. Very happy to have you. Um, so I'd love to jump right in and it's probably the biggest question, uh, but for uh, Tung and Kathy, for those who haven't really had the opportunity to, to snag their own copy of the book, um, can you tell the audience how you came to be in each other's lives and based in Miami together? Okay, that, this, this, that's the story in the book. But uh, it is the story of two different cultures, two different religions, two different education levels that were put together uh, because of uh, being a refugee and I being involved in with Lutheran World Relief recently in Vietnamese. And it involves a little girl named Lynn Nguyen who was there. Uh, who helped make uh, everything worthwhile. If, uh, who gave, it, gave me, for sure, joy and happiness and fun. And Tung also gave me a lot of fun, especially in the beginning, until she learned the word no. In the beginning, <laughs> she was, oh, yes, yes, because she was so on a wave, she didn't know where she was, what she's doing. So that's what mango and peppercorns is about. Mango and peppercorn is a dish that we had in our restaurant. And it's a collaboration because I, as you see behind me, I have a lot of cookbooks and I, and, and I would read every month Bon Appetit and Gourmet. And I found this recipe for mango, uh, fish, and peppercorn. And I made it. And I said, what do you think, Tung? And she, of course, took it and made it even better. And uh, uh, she put butter, she put heavy cream or coconut milk, whatever you want. Uh, she, and she put nook cham, which is the dipping sauce for Vietnamese over it. And so it became a collaboration of ours and it became the biggest seller in our restaurant. Okay. Yeah. The mark of a good partnership, it sounds like. Just it ep epitomized in that recipe. Um, so I guess the next question I'd really love to ask is, what were your first impressions of each other when you uh, <laughs> I, I think that's a funny question, so I'll, I'll let you take it away. We'll that's a you. good question. Right, I'm right. gonna okay. Tom, what did when you saw me the first time? What mm -hmm. did you think? 
Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know what I think. No, Kathy. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kathy. Oh, nice that is skinny. How long? I remember. Okay. Okay. How long skinny? Or fat? Uh, no, no. Fat. <laughs> oh my God. I, I go to Ellen and, the, and go out to airport and I see so fast. And I think, I know, oh my God, me so small. And this one, um, America, woman so fat, <laughs> really a scale. And they, and got one guy with no me and got their friends. And her, and him asking, look at, why you, uh, you look, why you look like you, uh, scared. Scared. No, I don't <laughs> know. And I see the American lady is so fat. <laughs> so fat, I don't know how do we go inside her house. And the, the guy with me got the friend. And I said, don't worry, don't worry. And I said, you live with her? He said, yes. He said, yes. He said, yes. And the maid be locked, sit down in the car. Maid is to be locked, maid is to be locked, maid is to be locked, maid is to be locked. Half one with no me. Okay. And I go inside the house. Well, the different. And I saw outside the building, the house. I think that the church, no house. She found it was a church. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I asked you to make it. Yeah, and look at this one. Church, no house. He look at no. The nya, and the, the house. And I know, oh, okay, then I go inside. I go inside, I look around, everything so new. Everything so new to me. Different and from Vietnam. Different, is, very yeah. different. At least the country no have that, no have. All the bamboo house and the uh, stove. We don't know how to on the gas stove. She didn't know how to turn on the stove. Okay, my turn. Yeah. Okay. What did I what did I think when I saw her? She thought I was fat. I thought she was ugly. <laughs> because I, no, she had one uh stripe uh, one polka dot shirt and uh, this is and one stripe pants. And she had um she I mean this is first impression when she got off the plane, right? This is when we're meeting. Uh, and uh, she had a lot of scars on her face from smallpox. At the time, I didn't know that it was smallpox. And uh, that's what I thought initially. But then I got to know her. And uh, that all changed. That all changed. Changed? Yeah. yeah. And so I'm curious, after, after you were getting to know each other and getting used to uh, the differences tongue in the United States, um, at what point did you decide to start your, your restaurant together? Okay, so I'll start and then I'll let you finish, okay? Mm -hmm. So what point did we decide to start the restaurant together? Okay, what point? Oh, you, you. Yeah, first. So uh, when Tong came, she couldn't sit down. She's like an ever ready bunny. She goes around and around. She was sweeping the, the leaves with a broom in my backyard. And she started cooking for all the Vietnamese because I ended up with 14 Vietnamese in my home. And uh, she would cook for all of them but she would never sit down. And I used to say, where's Tong, where's Tong? But as, as the, everybody got resettled, uh, the people who were going to take Tong as a living maid uh, found out that she was pregnant and decided that since she was alone, uh, nobody and pregnant, 
uh, they didn't want to become too involved. So she was left with me. And by that time I had seen uh, a lot. I had seen how, how she was treated by the Vietnamese and, and I had taken, she had never been to the doctor, the dentist, the hospital. Uh, and uh, so uh, when she started cooking for, to make money for Vietnamese, so she would cook stock at home. She would make a, her, her soup which fire or boom ball, which fire, everybody knows it's beef and rice noodle soup. And we would drive over to her Vietnamese friends and she would sell it from there. And then what happened? You take yeah. over. You took over. Yeah. Why you, you not talk to her? Tor, you're finished. <laughs> so what happened? And what happened and they, uh, the right, the native right. You shook the right, native right in check car. Okay, spill in check car. Okay, it right. spilled. The whole pan of soup spilled all over the car. Right. And I asked you not to go look the room somewhere around here. And she said, this is not going to work. I need a place to sell soup. Mm -hmm. Let's go look for a room. Uh, because in Vietnam, you know, you make a soup, you put it on a pole, you go out and you sit down and people come by and you give them bowls and they eat. It's called Vietnamese fast food. And uh, so she told me, let's go look for a place. So? So, during the, um, you look the room and the sheet team and have the Mama don't know before the right one and throw rain. She didn't and know how to read a sign that said for rent. And I asked you, and the what is it, big one, the right. And the room entry, another room entry too. And you know, oh, big one throw rain. And I, and the care she tap and ask you each other, look uh, the boat, look the boat, the uh, mid lemon. Mm -hmm. Right. You go out. So we we went, stopped and looked at the at this place and it um, the building that had this storefront. It was a storefront. Was two stories high. It had uh, it had office buildings over it. Which when you start a restaurant, make sure you don't take a two story no. <laughs> place because you have to duck. And you have to duck the hood up above, up to the second, uh, about 18 inches above the second story. So anyhow, we we uh, stopped there. We uh, it was a good price. We didn't know anything. It was a clothing store before, and uh, we signed the lease. We started working. We had. I was teaching, and so we used my money from teaching. And uh, it took us two and a half years to get open. I had help. We had, uh, one of a man from my church uh, helped with building. He was an old retired uh, construction. He built houses. So, uh, what did you do when? What, what was your job? In the restaurant when we were getting a uh, beginning. Uh -huh. My job, a lot of fun. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> a lot of fun. Pan? Paint. And sand. Paint and sand. <laughs> that was her <our> job. <laughs> and the city come. The city came. Came and they brought the hand, no good. Look no good. No, they came and <laughs> said, you have to have fire rated uh, installation. So we had to take down the whole wall and she had to, to have, what did you have to do again? Paint and sand. <laughs> and after two and a half years, she was fed up. 
she, you know, because Vietnam, no sales tax, no inspection, no, no nothing. I <laughs> come here open table, a lot of room. A lot she of learned a lot. Open. Mm -hmm. Welcome so, America. <laughs> welcome America. <laughs> so it took well, a lot of time. Open. So we got open. It took a while. And I actually want to flip through some of the slides uh, you have because you have this great image of, um, let me see, one second, of the restaurant. Um, this is, uh, okay, that's yeah, my back. grandmother. That's my grandmother, uh, uh, who I spent a lot of time with. She's Swedish. She was six feet tall. Uh, she didn't go to American schools. She came and uh, she had gone to uh, sixth grade in Sweden. Those are her great grandchildren, two of her great grandchildren. But she was uh, a foster uh, parent. I mean, it, and this was in Iowa. And so she, we figured that she had 125 children uh, that would come for one day, two days, three days while they got them all set up. And one boy was supposed to come for seven days and he stayed 13 years. And he was my friend. So that's my grandma. And she had, um, she, uh, she knew how to love. She taught me that love is the most important thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was something I wanted to talk about too. Um, in the book, you both talk about how important uh, your grandmothers were as you're growing up and how they really empowered you to pursue um, your interests even though they might be off the beaten path. Um, so could you talk a little bit more, Chung and Kathy, about um, how important your, your grandmother was in your childhood? Okay, I'm gonna give this to her and let her talk because her grandmother was the most, and they call it Banoi. Um, her grandma was very important to her. So you wanna tell them about your grandma? Oh my, that long time before. Now there is, what did I talk? Hers and the, um, my mother half not a baby. And the, my mother don't know what to do. My little girl. And this one my grandma told me. And my grandma took back home. Her took home, her took care. And no okay. care. You take care of your little one. Little one and have the about five months, another one, five months. And they have another one. And uh, uh, what do you call it? Baby Stop. in check. Oh, pregnant. Right, pregnant. And the my grandma, no, oh, okay, the forgot me. I hold them. <laughs> yeah, and uh, her hold me and her. Her take care of me and her, her roll me up. She, she grew up with her grandma. Now the village is not big. So the grandma, you know, live here, the family, same as mine, same as mine. My grandmother lived about four blocks from my home, okay? And Tom's grandma lived uh, not, not even blocks, you know, it was the path. And actually, Tong had uh, smallpox, and her grandmother took her to help her, her brother, uh, Mao, had smallpox too. And the boy is really important in Vietnam, so the parents kept uh, the, the boy uh, to, to take care of him. And the grandma took uh, Tong and... Uh, uh, Tong made it. Tong had a lot of scars. Her brother was became blind from smallpox, and uh, wow. but after that she was she followed her grandma around like a duck. Uh, mm -hmm. She taught her how to cook. 
she gave her uh, all the the wisdom, her wisdom. She was so proud of them. And she said, when I was walking home in the first chapter, you know, I, I say, Tung's grandmother told her father, don't be hard on Tung. So I said to myself, walking 10 miles home, don't be hard on Tung. <laughs> if you read the book, you'll see in that in the first chapter. And my grandmother uh, taught me everything too. Uh, she taught me how to work, uh, how to paint and sand. Actually, she bought houses and she fixed them up and sell them. And uh, uh, she had, uh, she cooked really, really well. So I spent a lot of time over there because even as a child, I loved good food. And uh, uh, she cooked one of the recipes is her fruit soup in, in the book. So um, as you both were right, and I wanted to bring us back together, um, as you both were writing the book, did you go in kind of knowing that you wanted to talk about these similarities um, your grandmother, for example, um, through the book, or did those kind of come out organically as you were writing those similarities? So we learned by writing. We learned about, about we knew uh, our, our backgrounds. I had been to Vietnam. When I went to Vietnam, I felt very comfortable in Vietnam because I had known her. And in knowing her, I knew what to expect. Um, so we didn't compare. It wasn't something we compared, but we shared what our grandmothers were like. And we came to realize that they were like, you know, that... Uh, and we shared everything. We found a lot of insight into each other that we had, we had lived it, but we hadn't written it. And mm -hmm. so it's a difference. There's a difference. So I, I'm curious, Tung, when you were writing the book, did you learn anything surprising about Kathy? Did, when you wrote the book, did you find out anything about me that you didn't know before? I don't know before. You don't know? I don't know you before. She lived it with me before. Okay, yeah. so... Uh, 1975. Right. right. So you yeah. lived it with we lived me. With you. But when yeah. you wrote the book, you didn't discover it. You knew me by then. Right. Okay. We learned things like when we uh, when we analyzed, like when I went back uh, first time or second time, they let me, uh, the government let me stay in Dien Bang, which is really a village and rice paddies, the most beautiful rice paddies. It's like the cornfields of Iowa, right? And uh, when I got there, I had known her mother the first time we went, but we weren't allowed to go to the country. We had to go, they had to come to the hotel and we mixed there and then drove around. But when I, in the country, the first thing her mother said, and she didn't know I spoke Vietnamese, she said, when does the American lady go? So. I looked at that time, I looked around and I said, we better become friends because I don't know where I am. Uh, but in writing the book, I found that she was concerned about her family and the village people. Because, and that I had never seen before. I Now I, I realize, and there's some certain, uh, the reason was that some things had happened to me you know, good, not bad things, but you know, and I understood that she was afraid for her 
family. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. learned that. Uh, oh, my mother? I learned, uh, yeah, your mother. Oh. Um, we, I learned about her. I learned about, but that was the experience too. I learned how well she cooked. And she cooked really, really well. And I learned that. Uh, but in talking, uh, in writing the book, when she talks about making stock, she expressed herself as why you do this, which she hadn't expressed before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it seems like another theme that came up throughout the book is that you both are very independent thinkers. You're very headstrong. And sometimes that caused some um, clashing in the kitchen at, at the restaurant. Um, so I was wondering, was it at times challenging to write this book together? Or was it nice to take a step back from your working relationship and kind of reflect on your relationship? OK, so it was nice to step back and uh, actually and to to share with Lynn uh, the, the things that she didn't know that was going on, okay? And also to, for Lynn to see her, her mother, okay? Right. Is that right? Right, right. Okay, you want to say anything? Oh my God, I don't know a lot, but I don't know what I say. Okay. <laughs> So, you talk? Okay, she wants, she said yes. <laughs> I talk. Okay, talk. <laughs> so um, in writing the book, did you find that the stories came first or the recipes came first? Because there's two elements um, to those who haven't seen the book. There's a recipe that accompanies each uh, chapter. So just curious about what came first. So they wanted the, they wanted the story. Okay, mm -hmm. they really wanted, a Chronicle wanted the story. My idea was no story, just little uh, little recipes and a little thing at the top, right? Because I knew mm -hmm. what our customers wanted. They, want, they were begging for recipes. <laughs> so the story came first, but then we matched, I, I made sure that all the recipes they wanted, although there's some more that uh, we're going to have to put up on YouTube, uh, that they want that uh, um, because our customers want curry chicken livers and gizzards and they want beef tongue and ginger. And, and in the beginning, they would come in and I say, try this. If you don't like it, you don't pay. So they tried and then they say it's so good and then they started eating everything. There wasn't anything that people wouldn't try. Yeah, good. So the story came first, mm -hmm. right? And then we added the recipes. So you mentioned that this is the first time that some of your customers are seeing the recipes written down. That's it. In fact, it's the first time that Tong saw the recipes written down. She wasn't one that wrote down recipes. I mean, you know, they, uh, she, she, uh, she didn't measure, never measured. They didn't have measuring things in Vietnam in the country. She didn't measure. So we had, it was a lot of work to, I would say, this this spoon or this spoon, meaning a tablespoon or a teaspoon. And she was so good. She could tell you this spoon or that spoon. So that's why the recipes, how they were, came about written. Uh, and then they te and we tested them and uh, she corrected them, mm -hmm. right? But she never measured anything. So tongue writing the recipes, was that a frustrating process for you? Okay, writing the recipes, was it hard for you? Did you like it? It's so sure. <laughs> Tell them the truth, Tom. I like it. But I more work. More work. <laughs> Did you yeah. really like or you 
told me I know like Jojo. Uh, Jojo. 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 I like everything I took, I, everything I go by hand. You read it? Okay, ready. Only one will have mm -hmm. to measure what number, what a, took a lot of time. See? Took and, a lot of time. <laughs> And I, I, I know like magic, cutting magic. And Leo Master, okay, ready. <laughs> and she's, she's got it. I mean, I, I one know. time, one time, go. one time, and she's got it. She's got it. It's amazing. You know, um, uh, I would ask her, how much of this do I put in? right? And she'd say, I bring a spoon or measuring, and she'd say this much, and she, I'd fill it up, and she said, that's it. And it came out right every time. <laughs> every time. Wow. <laughs> so I'm, I'm curious to hear, um, and you mentioned this before, your, your customers, your very loyal customers, we're excited to see your recipes, but um, how did you build up such a following of loyal customers when your restaurant was open in Miami? Because in our restaurant, uh, there are two things. One, we accepted everybody. We didn't care what your color, we didn't care if you were Asian, we didn't care and we saw people as individuals and they felt it, they felt it. And I was uh, like, I, my lawyer used to sit next to people and say, she's blatantly honest. So they he would set me up because maybe they're new people and they don't know, know me, you know? I ran mm -hmm. high wrong out front. Uh, I know what I wanted Haivon to be. I wanted Haivon to be a place where you came out of the, your circumstances, came out, sat down, ate, talked with people because we didn't have music. You know, we had a <laughs> lot of people get married after eating at Haivon because they had to talk. There was nothing else to, to do. And sometimes you sat an hour, uh, you know, at least hour to get in, an hour to get your food. Um, and I've been called everything. I was called uh, a disorientated cat lady and the soup Nazi from Seinfeld. And someone wrote that in the paper. And um, they, uh, they came in and they said they were they showed me and they said, boom, boom. and I said, yeah, it's funny. It's funny. I, I didn't take anything uh, seriously, but we accepted everybody. And, and they, sometimes I would serve a squid salad and, and the, the tables were two, two, two down the line. So I'd serve a squid salad to this table. And when I came back, it was at the last table, so they shared. <laughs> <laughs> they shared, and uh, they they supported us. If we needed something fixed, one lady made a bench for people. She said, "Kathy, you need a bench." So she, I mean, we would put <laughs> chairs out, but she she made a beautiful bench with the emblem high vong in it. Uh, a guy fixed the urinal. I mean, uh, we didn't have a bus boy. They bust the tables. It became a community. Just like we mm -hmm. were a community, they became a community. Hmm. Wow, it sounds like a kind of a family establishment. Going there it sounds like having a fa like a family meal with all of your relatives. That's what some people said. They said that on... Uh, I think you too, yeah. And I just pulled up the PowerPoint again for uh, for everyone to see just a snapshot of the interior of the restaurant. And I'll just flip back to uh, the exterior right after you opened. Right. We, it, we were so, so happy to get open. 
And I put up a sign that said, thank you, Lord, we are open, <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, surprisingly, mm. that brought the Miami hail. I mean, we could have been there for, uh, for years and nobody would find us because even later, people had trouble finding us. I mean, you know, they went up and down 8th Street and, uh, but uh, that, and the tables that you showed, uh, we made those tables. I made those tables. I got butcher block. I took, uh, uh, took um, to the mill and they milled me uh, maple legs and those tables lasted for 38 years. Yeah. Wow. Let me tell you, the tongue and the walls look beautiful. You did a great job on the paint. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I'm gonna bring us back together. Um, so another theme that really comes up when it comes to talking about your customers um, and kind of your working group um, is this theme about family um, and family is, it, is, is the people you choose are the people you choose, kind of like you chose your customers. Um, and there is a program at the Tenement Museum called uh, Your Story, Our Story. And it's a digital database where people can submit their um, stories of immigration and migration through crowds, uh, through everyday objects and, and recipes. Um, and things that it's, it, I, su I suggest everyone check it out if you haven't had the moment to. Um, but there's a story that uh, was submitted that is very familiar to yours. And I just wanted to share it really quickly. Um, and the, the person that submitted, her name is Serena. And she shared uh, that, uh, she shared a recipe that she, her family came to know how to make because uh, like yours, uh, they hosted a Vietnamese refugee family in the 1970s. And she has this fantastic quote um, that said that the Vietnamese family taught us that everyone has a story and something to offer you and you shouldn't always be willing to listen, or sorry, you should always be willing to listen and try to understand that story and that families aren't always who you're born with. Uh, a simple act of kindness can turn into a, an expansion of your closest family members. And I just love to hear how that kind of idea has played out with your restaurant and with your customers. Right, that's beautiful. Um, uh, uh, okay. No, yeah, this lady. They, um, you know, I learned to listen from her. I mean, we have a tendency to think, uh, you know, I had a tendency to think I knew everything. And so I brought, uh, when she wanted to make a dress for Fung Lin, I would bring this pattern home, you know, that you, you put down and cut. And she just looked at it and uh, she, she didn't use it. She didn't know how to use it. And so, and she made beautiful dresses. She made beautiful dresses for Fungi uh, uh, with baby food. Uh, I, I brought home jars of baby soup food because I thought Fungi was hungry. She wasn't getting a, enough food. And uh, I didn't listen that there is a thing that for her to do it her way, it's, it was doing it her way. So she taught me how to listen. And I think that's what happens when you mix. You, le you learn to listen and you become sensitive to their feelings uh, that are different from yours. And then you begin to learn the cultures. Right. When you learn to listen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have. She, I, she said, I have a hard head. Now I'm better. Okay, now it took me 45 years, but I'm better. <laughs> That's what she says. Okay. Um, so Tung, I have a question for you about your family in Vietnam. Um, after you left initially, you were you're running, um, you were you were separated from your family. And I was 
curious to hear about the process of reconnecting with your family in Vietnam um, and what it was like to go back and visit them. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, talk. It's a big question. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And, oh my God. Surprise to me. Surprise. I think maybe everybody, I can lean la, I, I, I can't uh, contact. I can't she couldn't like contact. Me. And I think everybody mm -hmm. in Nore, that. And I get them, I know, oh my God, what to do? Me alone here? I'm alone in America, and I go to Vietnam later, and I go to Vietnam. I found who? I found who? And how long? Well, well, 18 one, years. But 18 she years. couldn't get back to Da Nang because yeah. it was surrounded, there was no transportation. Mm -hmm. So she just ran and got on a boat. A boat. Okay. Right. Not the book, and uh, my stuck in America. And then she got <laughs> got to America. It's America. a long story. It's in the book, <laughs> right? But when story. when when you when it took us eighteen years to find her family because there was no communication between America and Vietnam. So she would write and they letters would come back and come back. So I said, okay, I have a friend in Austria and let's see if we send a letter to her and she sends it to Vietnam, maybe it would get through. And in it, this was 18 years after Tom was here, I put a card and so that mm -hmm. the grandma could see Fung Lien and uh, it got through. And then mm -hmm. what happened? What happened uh, later? Tran. Right, Tran, Vietnamese lady, uh, hair cut, right? Right. right. And her go to the restaurant. Oh no, her go to Vietnam. Right. Her go to Vietnam and, um, and everybody talking. And a friend out asked her, you live, uh, where do you live? And then I got live from uh, Loyola, Miami. And they had okay, you go, you pow, you find the uh, hit Tong. Tong is her name, right? And they had okay, I know. Yeah, now, and I see her have the restaurant, Hai Wong, and it's three. And everybody's cry, and everybody write letters, and she go to Tran, and Tran go America. And her, her gave the letter to me. Oh my God, big surprise. Yeah, amazing. What did you mm. think going back to Vietnam? And go back to Vietnam, I live here. How long, 18? No, uh, about 20, 22, 22 years. 22 years. And I go back in the country, no shame. No, no change. Just no change. People have Hanoi come in the shop. Hanoi. And, and the mm -hmm. no change total. No change. And I feel, I know, feel I stay there. I know, feel. My, in child, my mother and the, my, my brother and teacher. Mm -hmm. And I uh, come back and I work in the restaurant. And I share money and I have to pay. Everybody have a house. She built mm -hmm. houses for them. She built how many houses? But they are four. Four houses. But the houses are, are not expensive in Vietnam, but they were made with brick. I mean, that, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. She bought yeah. everybody bicycles. She doesn't know how to ride a bike. She <laughs> never had a bike. <laughs> I don't know how I ride bicycle. I go to Vietnam, I buy everybody ride bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that was the country was happy before. Long time to go, more happy. It was happier. I have really good and very happy. I live with my grandma, my mother, father, very happy. And I go back, everything so changed, so new. And no same happy. Different. 
it was different and the people weren't uh, weren't happy uh yeah they weren't as happy they they wanted something more uh but they didn't have hope and that's the name mm -hmm. of high wrong it's hope right I was going to ask you actually about the the how you chose the name of your restaurant and the meaning behind it. Okay, so hi uh, in Vietnamese heaven. Okay, and it means hope. And someone asked us, uh, actually a Vietnamese asked us, what is the difference for you between optimism and hope? Mm -hmm. And we talked about it and we both agree that uh, optimism comes from within you. I'm positive, I'm not. Hope comes from without, out of you, outside of you. And mm -hmm. whether you call him Yahweh or Troy or Allah, I, um, for Tom, it was... Uh, Troy, that's Vietnamese, right? That made the rain and the sunshine and the rice to grow. And so when we started Hai Vong, we, we didn't, we, at first it took so long to get open, we, could, we didn't have anything but hope and that our work would be blessed. And it was, it was blessed a lot. And blessed not only with the, but with friendships too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems like your restaurant was so impactful in the Miami community because you really paved the way for many other restaurants to come. Um, and also were just such important staples to your customers' lives. And I had seen an interview with one of your customer, Mike was talking about how initially he had been really excited to bring his girlfriend home to his parents. And he also added, and Kathy, I wanna bring her to Haigong to meet Kathy too. Um, and that kind of makes me, me, me curious, um, as you, Haigong has closed um, and you're doing more of your pop-ups and catering events, how have you stayed connected with your customers? How, how does so? How, how have you how have you stayed connected with your customers okay. these days? So, so first of all, when we uh, closed, they kept bugging us. Uh, uh, open, <laughs> open, open, <laughs> and uh, that's when we decided to do pop ups, and they were sold out all the time, and so all our customers. Uh, came back, they came to the pop-up. Now after COVID, we've been doing pickups. That means that we box the food up and you just drive by and you pick it up. And Jen, I wow. am seeing customers that I didn't see at the pop-up. So I am seeing, uh, it is, it, it's really happy to see them. So they keep, and then they have my, they text me all the time, whatever's good, whatever bad. And I write my thoughts on Facebook and I, uh, um, Facebook, how wrong Facebook? And uh, they read it and they comment. Yeah. So, yeah. and what happened in the problem is the stone started, uh, having a voice, you'd never know it from tonight, but she, <laughs> she had a voice and she would, I would uh, introduce you, she'd come out, right? And I found that uh, I, I thought she had gone back to the, the kitchen and she was out there talking, going from table to table talking. And so <laughs> she, it was a chance for her to really mix. Mm -hmm. Welcome, America. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> so, Tung, have you liked kind of getting some distance from the kitchen and being able to interact with your customers a little bit more? Yeah. Right. Were you? Uh, it was possible for you to interact with your customers more when we had the pop-ups. 
Süreç. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> She was happy. Yeah. She was really happy. And they were happy too because they loved her food and they loved her. Uh, but they didn't always have a chance uh, to mix with her. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And, and nice to get some FaceTime tone with all the people you've fed over the years as well. Um, and I was just curious, we were kind of talking about this before the live stream started, but how has uh, Tung and Kathy, your relationship changed now that you are not uh, working as closely and having a brick and mortar restaurant? So it is, it's easier because um, I got into trouble all the time because I wanted people to try Tung's food. I was very proud of Tung's food. I mean, I had eaten Vietnamese food before, but I had never eaten anything like Tong's. And I wanted people to try. So they, some people would come early and I say, you want to try Tong's lunch? Because uh, she cooked lunch. She always cooked lunch. They try. And then we, we had trouble because pork rolling cakes are made one by one and they became a big seller. And I was giving them away in the beginning, only in the beginning, so that people would taste and want them. And uh, she would keep an eye on me out through that window to see if I was giving anything away. Uh, I gave all the time. I gave all the time. She wasn't happy about that. Giving, you know, she wanted a real business, and I wanted. Uh, uh, it was different. We had different views on business. You know, I always thought that if you do your job well, you make it, right? Uh, but she, not having, wanted to save everything that you make, uh, and. And you know what? Yeah, right. If you read one the book, like you're, cake, one if, like cake, one letter, <laughs> same one. But if you read the book, you see that her saving paid off. And I'm not going to tell you anymore. You have to read the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> well, I'd love to ask Lynn a quick question, if that's OK. Um, and because we have Lynn here with us as well. Um, I really enjoyed in the book when your perspective also comes in. And I was just hoping you could talk really quickly about how, what it was like to grow up uh, working at Haivong and how it kind of influenced your life later on. Um, you, you know, now in hindsight, <laughs> I think it was the best experience that I had. Uh, growing up, I resented it. You know, as, as a kid, I wanted parents that had white collar jobs that went to an office. Um, and I didn't want to have to be called in on the weekends and have to be bussing tables and helping at the restaurant. Um, but, you know, it really taught me how to work with people and how to work with people that you may not always like um, and how to multitask. <laughs> and I think that those are all really basic skills that I've needed forever. Um, but I think more importantly is what Tung and or my mom and Kathy represented through the restaurant is really this, you know, be fearless. There's no boundaries. There's no rules. Uh, make your own way. And mm -hmm. that's what really Haivong taught me. That's she wonderful. was a little girl and one of my good friends that was a lawyer he had become she went up to his table she was probably five and she said the service is going to be very slow tonight my mother's in a bad mood <laughs> <laughs> so she she started working at five <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure your customers love that too to see right. Lynn around walking I around think they told me that story, yeah, they told me. So if uh, there are folks tuning in from the Miami area and they are wanting to taste your food after this talk, 
what is the best way to connect with you? So, okay, you want to answer that? Okay, so yes. Yeah, so on our website, which is highvong.com, um, we do do pickups and we actually have a pickup coming up. But I will say that we sell out within about two hours. So it is very difficult to get a spot in our pickups, which is really why we're trying to promote the book and teaching people. So we have some virtual cooking classes and we're doing videos um, because we really want everyone to bring the food into their own home and realize that cooking Vietnamese food is not so different than cooking Italian food or something else. Mm -hmm. That's great. So does the book include one of like the, the most popular dish and most beloved dish at Hai Vong so that they could bring Hai Vong into their home? Okay, so uh, I think fish with mango is really, uh, really good. Even in the book, you know, Tung would go out and eat and she'd eat it and she'd say, oh, it needs this and that and she'd come home and Fix it. So in the book is macaroni and cheese, mm -hmm. and uh, she she adds uh, meat to it, and uh, she uh, so uh, the other thing is chicken and pastry. Oh, people mm -hmm. go crazy with chicken and pastry, <laughs> uh, and then also uh, chicken and lemongrass. I mean, it all. They love it. There's some people that love. So for all those tuning in, uh, you can actually purchase mango and peppercorns from the Tenement Museum shop. And there have been, uh, I think we have posted the link to buy in the chat. Um, but as we're winding down in the last few minutes, if you have any questions uh, for the authors, please feel free to type those in. But I'm gonna pass it over to Kathy right now, but because she wanted to finish up with a reading from the book. Right. Now, after, after the, the whole book, this is Tung at the end. This is her voice at the end of the book. Uh, and I say that's where she found her voice. Uh, I, she found her worth. Uh, she found her talent. And this is Tung talking. Uh, now that my story has been told, I feel free. My head is clear. For years, it was easiest for me to try to forget so many events in my life. Remembering those stories and all their painful details has opened new wounds, but it has closed many too. I never realized that my story might be interesting to people. I never thought my story might even inspire others. For most of my life, I just wanted to belong. Cooking was how I belonged. I am so proud to have cooked food that made so many people, different types of people happy. In Vietnam, I could never gain the respect of wealthy people. In America, my background and my status didn't ma matter, except to other Vietnamese. American doctors, lawyers, celebrities, teachers, parents, and children all ate my food. They helped me, praised me, and gave me the confidence to share more about my life. The first time I saw people at a dinner stand up and clap for me, I was overwhelmed. All I could do is cry and think they stood up for me. Someone from the country, someone who never finished elementary school. Thank you for that. That's such a wonderful and powerful uh, passage to end on. And thank you, Tung, for sharing your story today. Yeah, thank so, you. Thank you, you are doing. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, so Tung, Kathy, and Lynn, uh, 
thanks again for joining us tonight. It was really wonderful to hear a deeper dive into mangoes and peppercorns. And um, for those tuning in, if once again, if you'd like to purchase the book, uh, we'll be sharing the link. And in the coming weeks, we hope you stay engaged and um, continue to participate in our public programming on YouTube. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Welcome.